right, here we are. Uh, we are on the draw. And there's a lot of chalices. And dismember and a Leon and Arbor. I'm going to keep... Um, I feel like aggressively mulliganing in these, in these game ones. It's just going to hurt me more often than it's going to pay off. So we'll see what we can do. We can show off some matching dismembers, I guess, apparently. Pretty hot stuff. I actually, I believe I just said matching. But in case it wasn't clear, they do not match. Apologies. Mismatching was my intended uh, phrase there. All right, just guy it is. Glacial Fortress. So I think... I think I'm going to go for the Chalice on one here. The reason that I'm doing that over the Arbiter is to save myself the trouble of getting this Arbiter bolted or helixed and then not having an impact. This way, my opponent... Uh, There's a good argument for Eldrazi there, by the way, but I think I'm going to name human. This way, my opponent has to have Logic Knot or something similar. Um, Mana Leak, sure, that, that counts as something similar. Less common uh, for Jeskai, but certainly a counter spell that you're allowed to play. Apparently, we have six to the beginning of combat here, so let's go ahead and fix that up. Uh, Resolving Thalia, Guardian of Thraben sounds decent. But I kind of want to keep playing this Chalice game before we get to Cryptic. I mean, obviously Cryptic can bounce it. Having two dismembers here is a little bit discouraging. We also get to Snapcaster next turn, so I think, I think doing this first is relevant. Click. Electrolyze, okay. Getting that Electrolyze out is pretty good for us, actually. I, we have a lot of threats that die to Electrolyze here. Okay, another Thalia. That incentivizes me even more to go ahead and resolve this first before any of my other threats. But it did miss their land there, so that does help us uh, understand the motivation for the Electrolyze. Not necessarily that our opponent is so flooded with those effects, but that they needed to hit their land drop. They do go ahead and Helix Thalia, Guardian of Thraben and ship it back to us. So we will try again, uh, particularly with our opponent missing their land drops. We're excited about Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. We're just all about two pairs here. All right, they did hit their land drop this time. Um, do I attack? How do I get punished? Snapcaster doesn't really punish me, so... Restoration Angel, I guess. I have Dismembers, so we'll go for it. Um, yeah, it stinks we didn't get these Arbiters in play in time for these fetch lands, but... Oh, this resolves. So I wonder if they're going to grab a basic. I guess they're just going to grab a, uh, a dual into play tapped anyway, or a basic. So it doesn't really change anything for them to let that happen. Electrolyze, perhaps? Yeah. Another electrolyze. We do get the Scalding Tarn into play tapped, which is great, especially when paired with these Arbiters. But it does have quite a few cards, though. Hopefully, they're just a pile of ones. Unfortunately, not a human, so we can't cavern one through pos past a possible cryptic or snap mana leak, for that matter. And to play tapped. So one of these is going to get countered, but we do get to play the other. So just all pairs. We're, we're three pair today. And then we have a pair of dismembers even. All we need is another smasher, and uh, excluding lands, we'll have drawn two copies of all of our cards. Yeah. It's one of those things where you draw a card, and you're excited about it, and you fire it off, and yeah. Chalice will get you. I've done that while streaming many times. Streaming in particular, 
it does not necessarily lead to the tightest play. Let's, let's stick with that. I think I'm just going to slam Smasher here. Cryptic can't happen because of the Scalding Tarn. So it has to be another Mana Leak or something along those lines. Logic Knot. Oh, no. We do have another Mana Leak, perhaps. Fetch into leak. That's that's just that's just all kinds of feel bad. Or logic not apparently. Yeah. Well, that that doesn't make me happy. I'll be honest. I don't like that too terribly much. I don't want to trade my arbiter for this snapcaster mage. I don't have very many resources left, and my opponent has plenty. So I kind of need to highly value the ones that I do have, and hope that these dismembers can do some work. Um, for example, killing this Teferi. Cross our fingers, I guess. Okay, well, I suppose that comes first, then. Well, it depends on what we want to play around, honestly. If I can get my opponent to counter a dis... Well, no, that's, that's fine. I'm just going to do this first. Ghost Quarter will likely come in handy eventually as well. Cryptic, Cryptic, Bolt, Snap. Well, obviously we're not taking the Bolt. Not as many ones as I would have hoped. Uh, both Cryptic and Snap are obviously going to be a hassle. Let's just say a hassle. Snap is usually the pick here. And I guess it has to be in this spot if I want to kill this Teferi anyway. Snapcaster it is. Down to nine. Effectively five, really, if my opponent wants to. But that would be fine with me. Uh, I am going to go ahead and kill this Teferi. I think it is likely to cause me problems and isn't worth putting my opponent to six here. In fact, minus on this. Uh, maybe we'd be fine, actually. Maybe I can't afford. No, I guess with the Cryptics, I really can't. So we have perfect info. I am fairly certain opponent is just going to tap our team and draw a card here. They do not. Okay. Well, I have both Ghost Quarter and Dismember, so trying to block with Colonnade isn't a thing. Hmm. So they just want to leave up Cryptic for actually countering something or they want to buy themselves the most amount of time possible I mean they're gonna like bounce TKS hmm I wonder if there was a time where I would have been able to like a, a time that I missed where ghost quarter would have been really great this game I feel like I didn't pay quite enough attention to that. I bet I missed like a good opportunity. I know I needed my mana a lot and I cast Smasher this game with it and all that stuff, but anyway, that's sort of an aside. I guess I'm not casting anything else here into these cryptics. Yeah, this just feels strange to me. I feel like tap draw was just so much better. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand that they get an extra card for now out of this exchange. Um, oh, I probably should have stopped on their draw step and taxed their mana a little bit. No, I think holding this ghost quarter will pay off. Maybe they're trying to set up to burn me out. Maybe they think that's their most likely way to win this game. I'm not going to sack this yet. 
no incentive really to cast that. Like where they draw additional burn spells, but they just didn't. They had to draw two additional burn spells to make that worth it. Draw additional burn spells and then bounce my chalice. Okay, so this time they just tap. Yeah, this is my problem with this line overall. Now I just get to resolve this Thought Not Seer again. After they've cast both Cryptics. And look for whatever might be threatening. Oh, wow, they are going to return Chalice right now. wonder if they've drawn a path and they get to like path thought not seer and kill kill leona at arbiter or excuse me thalia and then i mean they still have to have a way to deal with the leona arbiter yeah i i'm just casting this again i'm gonna leave up ghost quarter this time at the expense of a life they've drawn mana leak okay well that was a good draw Surprised to see the Thalia bolt in the end step at this point. It certainly means their other card was not a burn spell. Otherwise, they would just like be on the cross your fingers mode. One mystery card in our opponent's hand. Yeah, I'm just going to go straight to combat. with a ghost quarter and we got it all right so in a matchup like Jeskai their primary plan is already kill all of my guys worship is not going to be great there Karn however is a fine way for me to try to go over the top a bit opponent on multiple i guess they only showed us one mana leak no two mana leaks so light, less likely to be very heavy on logic knots so they did show us one uh, and they do have snap casters it's possible 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 if i have enough bad ones that i want like one rest in peace though i don't love it again they're going to be on less logic knots it appears Jeskai, though, is going to be on the full quad snaps, so at least we've got that going for us, and they'll likely also have some number of search first contas. I mean, again, those snaps still do anything. Search first conta still does anything. It's not something I'm terribly excited about in a grindy matchup, but something that we reasonably have access to, and I have far too many dismembers in right now. The best thing these do is kill colonnades, and I've already got quad quarter um, for that job, so... I think uh, bringing this in, bringing one rip. Man, maybe I'm going to have multiples. I'm on the draw here. Could shave a mana monkey on the draw. But again, there's not really anything I'm excited about. I mean... Honor Guard interacts with Snap, but that's basically just worse, I think, than Rip. Maybe I am going to bring in both Rest in Peace. That just seems ambitious, but I don't really have anything. I guess this just makes the cards I'm leaving better, but in multiple dismembers is probably still even bad with the Quad Quarter. I really don't want to draw multiple of that card. All right. Uh, I guess cast out. I don't know why I'm kind of glossing over that. I should have brought that, and if there's game three, we'll bring that. That's my mistake. With with how many sort of permanents these Jeskai lists are playing nowadays, it's certainly better than it once was, and I kind of just like ignored it there during sideboarding. So I'm sure I'm sure some number of you were yelling at your uh, monitors or phone screens there. 
Um, Thalia is the most annoying early. Let's go with that. I, I particularly like Thalia here because my opponent's a little bit more likely to actually counter spell interact with it than removal spell interact with it because the tax itself might stop them if their only removal spell is like Helix and Electrolyze and stuff, which sets up better for Smasher. Um, I really, really want the Smasher to resolve, though. It's just so easy for them to kill this. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go for this. I think there's an argument for Arbiter, but again, they just have a thousand ways to kill an Arbiter. Um, so it's not really going to draw a counterspell. This will if they have it. But it's possible they didn't have a way to kill an Arbiter and then as such would have let us... Um, would have would have actually mana leaked it, but I don't think that's terribly likely. Okay, this is still our only white source, so I can't really get rid of it. Um, I would like to get a threat in play. Both of my threats interact with their lands. This one hits a little bit harder. Neither play around mana leak. So, let's go for it. Another mana leak. All right. Uh, now, next turn, I get to try and resolve something through a potential third mana leak, though. Third. Oh, no. Oh, no. Somehow I got double pressed. Wow, that's a real bummer. Um, I guess I'm not sacking this. Horizon Canopy, because I want to double spell this turn. Wow, that sucks. Okay. Um, both of these are going to cause me pain here. Let's try this one first, I guess. Yikes. Gotta love those misclicks. It's been quite a while, I think, since I lost an entire turn, though. That's uh, that's always good. Could have went for the double Arbiter Ghost Quarter here. Um, honestly, that's likely better. Just seemed unlikely to work out. I'm not even going to go for GQ now. Yeah, or on draw step. Pony can now kill Leon and Arbiter and not get Ghost Quartered. Ooh, second Ghost Quarter. Second Arbiter is going to work out pretty well. Opponent will likely respond to this by trying to hurt this Arbiter friend. Special actions, of course, do not use the stack, so we can't like Ghost Quarter them again in response to them paying for this Arbiter. Yeah, they're going to path this first one. Um, what I can do... It's not very relevant. I also don't really care about paying for my own Arbiter. It's probably better for me to just use my Canopy. I mean, I guess having a non-pain white source and thinning myself is not irrelevant, so it's probably worth the life. I'll probably pay for my own Arbiter, but in the meantime... I might want to GQ them here just to get them to pay. Probably not, though, right? I mean, like, I'm not... Like, let's say I GQ this. They float, pay, get their land, and then still have two mana up for this one. I think I'm supposed to just bide my time with this and restrict the way they can use their mana. So let's just do this. Oh, wow. I paid for my own Arbiter. I'm sorry. <laughs> I knew I was going to do something stupid with Arbiter in this series. I'm, I'm like, thinking about this Arbiter. That doesn't make any sense. If, if you haven't caught it already, which seems unlikely, I did not at all need to pay for that Arbiter. Uh, opponent has a tear for this. Uh, and, again, not a special – or special actions do not use a stack, so I can't, like, ghost quarter this. And then they pay, and then I respond by ghost querying. Like, them paying doesn't use the stack. So, um, yeah, I guess that happens. Yeah, obviously, I just lost a life point and some mana for no reason. Paying for my Arbiter is nonsense. Um, yeah, 
My mistake. Overly thinking the second arbiter situation, I suppose. As as almost almost as though it had already resolved. Um, chalice is interesting. It's it's particularly nice that my opponent's really restricted and how they can use their mana because of this arbiter double ghost quarter situation. Let's play a land. Use this. This. Uh, let's just cast this on one. Two is kind of appealing here, but I think I'm going to go for one. Oh, it just resolves. All right. Well, I would hate to get Snapcastered here. That would just be really bad. Let's draw here. So I'm just not going to... I know that would be... Hmm. I guess I'd get to double ghost quarter them, right? If they snap trade terror. No, that doesn't make any sense, brain. Ugh. This arbiter is, is apparently throwing me for a loop. I knew I was going to try to punt with this thing. Got to be extra careful when you put an arbiter, like, anywhere near me. On Magic Online in particular. Um, all right. Don't already have a gemstone mine. I can split this planes anyway. And try to resolve this TKS. I uh, like playing the land out, just in case of, like, Logic Knot. Holding it's not really going to do much for me anyway. Logic Knot can counter for five, so I guess playing the land out doesn't really help me there, but... Okay, so they electrolyze my Arbiter first. Well, I'm probably going to Ghost Quarter this Colonnade eventually. Let's just go ahead and tax their mana a little bit more here in case that restricts their ability to interact with this thought not seer likely they're just firing off electrolyze now um so that we don't get to take it with the thought not seer but either way we'll tax that in case they were to draw something that they would need that mana for all right, so they have a Logic Knot, which they could not use. Anger the Gods doesn't do anything here. Path gets countered by our Chalice, and then they're left with a Settle the Wreckage, which certainly I could attempt to play around, but seems to be the most relevant of those cards by a wide margin. Uh, they don't even have double red for that Anger, which we can also restrict if that were to ever become necessary, uh, assuming they don't have a basic Mountain, which some of the lists recently have not. Uh, in fact, I think... Even I would go so far to say as I would expect them to not have one. Another ghost quarter. Or excuse me, another arbiter to go with this ghost quarter. I will go ahead and bash. I'm just glad I haven't cast anything to my own chalice. I might I might apparently not be able to handle arbiter and using my mouth at the same time, but at least I haven't cast anything to my own chalice yet. I should be careful, I suppose, to get too terribly excited. Uh, I will hold this, I guess. Not going to hit this, even though they could find a second red source and actually kill my Arbiter. I'm not terribly concerned about that. If I have nothing to do here, it's probably best for me to Shafet Dunes. Sack it to itself. All right. Well, apparently didn't have to play uh, didn't have to play super tight with my arbiter. We were still able to get there. That's very fortunate. Um, yeah, I'm sure when I watch this back later, I will probably see an abundance of times where it would have been better for me to GQ uh, throughout the match, even not really just this game. Um, but we'll see. There are definitely some spots where holding up your GQs when your opponent has the ability to pay really restricts their ability to use their mana especially after having missed land drops right they can't afford to get uh strip mined and as such have to leave two mana up all the time when they have to leave two mana up all the time um 
that could be punishing but yeah obviously don't pay don't pay for your own arbiter when it's getting pathed even if there's another arbiter on the stack you, you can pay you can pay for the other arbiter if it's in play but not when it's on the stack so uh, either way i'll see you in the uh, for the final round in just a moment